You pull into the charger bay, you get out, you swipe your contactless card, RFID, uh, activate the app, whatever it is you do, and when you're ready, you remove the plug, plug it in, then wander off to do whatever it is you do when you're charging. Does anybody actually look at the charger itself? Who made it? How does it work? How does it compare to other makes? What's different? What are all these other cabinets for? Well, I do, and the questions I have are almost endless. Well, Dave takes it on, looks at the manufacturers of the public EV DC chargers that are installed in the UK and operated by companies like Gridserve, Instavolt, Ionity, ChargePoint, to name just a few. Now, a quick Google search lists the top 10 EV DC rapid and ultra rapid charger manufacturers in the world, and no prizes for guessing who comes top. Yep, it's Tesla, but let's put them to one side for the moment and see what else is happening because it's massive. As I travel around the country, I encounter a large number of different chargers and rarely dig very much deeper. But yesterday, I was on one of my filming sessions. I pulled into Rivington Services on the M61 near Bolton, and while filming, happened uh, upon three brand new huge cases, all wrapped up, looked very interesting. Well, since the charger installation there is almost brand new and fully operational, these interested me, so I got up close and did some filming. ABB is a name I have seen before, but never really gave it much thought to. I've seen it on the side of lorries. But these pictures on the labels look decidedly like EV chargers, so I made some notes and returned, determined to find out more. Wow, what a huge industry that has sprung up. It made me think of the reaction to the introduction of the motor car over 100 years ago. There were the doomsayers back then claiming, oh, this is the end of the world. It'll destroy stables and stud farms and saddlers and furriers and vets and feedstock merchants and, oh, the whole industry. And they all claim this will destroy the economy totally, kill an industry that's been around for hundreds of years and so on and so forth. Huh. If only they could see the world today. Well, maybe that's a lesson for today's doomsayers. Just look ahead a few years and realise how silly your fears and reactions actually were. Anyway, today obviously we have a mega industry, the automotive industry, and several other mega industries needed to support them, like petrol stations, service garages, spare parts shops, the giant oil industry, road builders, traffic light manufacturers. Again, the list is endless. Well, now it appears to be coming to an end. What does the future hold? Are we going to just destroy one industry full stop? Or, like the car taking over from the horse, are we launching dozens or hundreds of new industries that will not only replace them, but expand and end up far larger, far beyond anything we can imagine? Well, my first look says we are definitely on the brink of some tremendous new industries and the economic future, while it is going through a really rough transition point at the moment, is looking better than ever, just in a direction that we hadn't foreseen. Well, I've looked into the manufacturers of public DC rapid chargers and the industries are already absolutely massive and growing in areas I did not even envisage. Well, this video is the first in a series looking at the chargers, the manufacturers that all us EV drivers use, either rarely or pretty much every day. It's an initial glance at the industry, and I will follow this up with an in-depth tech dive into each of the manufacturers, so you'll know a lot more about what you're handling when you charge your car. Stand by to be educated. And if you do enjoy this video, please subscribe so that you don't miss the future episodes in this series. Well, one make I've come across more than all the others, immediately identifi identifiable from their colour scheme, and one regularly talked about is Kempower. Did you know they're a Finnish company? No, that, sorry, that's based in Finland, not a Finnish company. Lati, to be precise, that's a city in Finland, a major one. Well, from there they supply the world, and in the UK, probably their biggest customer is Osprey Charging. Well, they manufacture a range of units and power and sizes and shapes. 
but the most common is seeming to be the relatively small, what they call 150 kilowatt station charger. Well, these have the switch gear remote, uh, remotely located, and so the chargers themselves are very small, attractive units. I do have a personal issue, you may have seen my video, with the cables and plugs they install. I found the cables to be absolutely massively heavy and inflexible. They're a real pain to use, hence the overhead spring to try to take out some of that weight. But even the plug itself is huge and heavy. Well, apart from this gripe, the charges are brilliant. They already have a reputation for power and reliability, and I particularly love the info that these provide by the small LCD LED screen. Just snap the QR code with your smartphone, and there's a mass of interesting, well, to me anyhow, additional data. I've used these on several occasions, usually only for a few quick uh, kilowatt hours because of the huge cost Osprey charge, but I've always found them to be quick, easy, neat, reliable, and pro providing plenty of the rated power output. We'll go into much more detail in our new series. Well, the boxes I saw at Rivington were labelled ABB. And while I'd heard of this company, I had no knowledge of what they did. I'd seen ABB on the side of lorries, but that was all. Well, it turns out they're a really large manufacturer of public EV DC chargers. There's a bit of a trend developing here. They're Swedish. I know it's Scandinavian, not Finland, but pretty close, and they turn out to be a world leader in electrification and automation. Although the headquarters is now in Zurich, and yeah, I know that's not in Sweden, the original company was called Almana Svenska something or other I can't pronounce. It was Swedish before it merged, or was taken over, with Switzerland's Brown Bovari and C. Uh, so add the A from the Almana and the BB from Switzerland, and you got ABB. It's bit like ABBA, with the initial letters of their names. Anyway, both the original companies date way back to the early 1800s, though obviously back then it was electrical, not EV charging. They have a really interesting YouTube video explaining all, and I'll show, show a short section of it here. Unfortunately, I cannot show the whole thing with sound, as it does contain a music track, and YouTube will immediately raise a copyright claim against me. Check out their website if you're interested. We can watch the whole thing in full. Well, they manufacture a huge range of DC chargers, and I recognise one model as the units that GridServe is currently installing on the M6, 12 of them. They're really slim, neat and futuristic. They featured on one of my previous videos. And they come in a variety of power ratings, although GridServe seem only to take the 350 kilowatt models. ABB, too, has built up a tremendous, tremendous reputation for power and reliability amongst those who actually know they do it. If you've used GridServe, you've probably used one of these. Now, I find the GridServe business model to be a great example of what should happen with EV charging in the UK, and so I trust their judgement as to which chargers they buy. Siemens, another well-known name, dates back many decades, 1847 to be exact, when Werner von Siemens got involved in the newfangled electric telegraph. Well, move forward to today, and Siemens now concentrates on electrification, automation, and digitalization. The chargers are really neat in appearance from the photographs I've seen as I've yet to see any in the flesh that I can recall. Anyway, this is quite some size industry and seems to have gone largely unnoticed by the media or the general public. As a general guide, the EV charging manufacturing is absolutely massive and it not only caters for the public in their EVs, the main aim is commercial, targeting lorries and buses, and workplace charging. And we in the UK do have a few manufacturers, but really rather niche to date. Is the UK missing out on this boom too? Well, knowing this government, probably. But anyhow, let's not go there, that's politics. Back to the world manufacturers. KAL, K-A-Y-A-L, is a major player based in China. Yeah, they had to get in there somewhere. Already a large company, but little known in the UK. And again, they concentrate on the buses and lorries, but cover all products right the way down to individual home chargers. And watch out for these. They're probably going to end up a household name in a few years' time. Joint 
much smaller company, also from China. So again, expect big things. They manufacture domestic home chargers right up to the massive DC chargers, and they also diversify into buses and lorries. They don't appear at the moment to be a really big manufacturer, or even in the UK, as the most powerful model, DC, is just 150 kilowatts. But that would probably suit the likes of Instavolt, who rarely install anything more than even this relatively low power output. And coming around finally to Tesla. Yeah, they are the largest manufacturer of DC chargers in the world, and only ever produce a single model at a time while others produce a myriad of, of models, 50, 75, 100, 150, 250, 350, whatever, in a variety of styles and shapes and sizes, Tesla has reached mass production and hugely reduced costs by sticking to just one at any one time. Their first effort, the, v, the V1, was 130 kilowatts, and there are still a few of those around, and I've actually used one. It was quickly superseded by the V2, 150 kilowatts, with power shared between two bays and equipped with dual CCS2 and Tesla Type 2 DC plugs. That lasted until 2019 when the V3 was launched, featuring 250 kilowatt non-shared power and a single cable with CCS2 plug in line with European directives. This year, they launched their V4, also rated at 250 kilowatts, but this one is much more interesting. I will be doing a deep tech dive into these, but in essence, these are for Tesla to capitalise on expanding the supercharger network into non-Tesla drivers. The new chargers have an LCD LED screen, contactless payment terminal, and a cable twice as long. None of these are any use to Tesla drivers, we've managed quite well. But as opposed to Osprey and Instavol, the cables on these 250kW V4 chargers are really thin, light and flexible. And they have a new CCS2 plug, it's much smaller, neater, really quite stylish. Now the interesting bits are obviously hidden behind the new style cabinet, that itself is much taller, thinner and wider. Now these are promoted as future-proof, and many wonder why when they're only 250 kilowatts? Well, the answer is, the software limited to only 250 kilowatts because at present, no Tesla can take more. Even the Model S Plaid tops out at 250 kilowatts. And few non-Teslas can take that sort of power either. There just, at the moment, is no need for more. But, if the power is software limited, then how powerful are they and when will they increase it and how will it be done? Well, you know, Tesla's a software company and so at the press of the enter key, they can instantly switch the entire supercharger network to exactly what they want, 300, 350. Now, many suspect the limit is 350 in line with GridServe and their ABB units, but I feel it will be far higher, much more powerful. The Cybertruck, when launched next month, is rumoured to be able to accept 500 kilowatts. So these V4s would not be future-proof if they couldn't match that. I think we'll find these can top out well above 500 kilowatts. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this overview of the major manufacturers of EV DC rapid chargers. Please subscribe so you can see very much more detail in the upcoming series on all the units currently being installed. Thanks for watching. I'm Dave.